Hi, this is Rob McLean from LearnToCruiseOnline.ca. This is the second episode in the Connected Boat series. In this session, we'll talk briefly about some major trends affecting the boat electronics ecosystem. Firstly, while 20 years ago, many, if not most, boat instruments were standalone devices, in today's world, it's assumed that almost all boat boat electronics will be connected to a network, probably based on one of the NMEA standards. While the NMEA standards are proprietary and not open, they have been reverse engineered enough that they be, can be considered quasi-open. Supplementing the near ubiquity of boat networks is the use of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as additional means of communicating between sensors and a variety of displays. It is also far easier than before for a boat to maintain connections to the internet over Wi-Fi, marina services, mobile phone services, or satellite. Innovations have resulted in a variety of new navigation and safety aids, including availability of various types of weather data, AIS to keep track of other boats, and personal locator beacons that increase your chances in a distress situation. The fact that a number of countries now make their charts available for free has generated many technologies that take advantage of that and there are initiatives around the world that are encouraging greater availability of free digital charts. More generally, we're seeing a variety of efforts to crowdsource information of interest to boaters. Increasingly, anything with a screen is being adapted to display multiple types of information from multiple sources. In addition to multifunction devices, we're seeing the emergence of multifunction apps running on PCs and mobile devices that integrate a wide variety of virtual instruments. Stimulated by the traditionally high cost of marine electronics, enthusiasts are leading a variety of open initiatives that leverage the widespread availability of low-cost computing devices such as Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and are promoting open standards such as Signal K that are intended to make it much easier to exchange data between sensors and mobile devices. In parallel with these positive trends are some ongoing challenges. While this is increasingly rare, some manufacturers are still attempting to defend the proprietary walled gardens that used to require that a boat owner standardize on one manufacturer's equipment. Finally, a number of jurisdictions, such as Canada, UK, Australia, and others, are maintaining the monopoly power of their hydro hydrographic services to charge very high prices for what in other jurisdictions is considered public data. There is so far no indication that this will change anytime soon. This concludes our discussion of major trends. You'll see evidence of these trends in the subsequent screencasts in this series.